Greetings hobbyists, this is our Sands of Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at how we can move vertices around an object while maintaining its shape. So this is a situation I was talking about with someone. We have a vertex on an edge, that edge isn't in line with any of the global axes. And if we were to set up a local axis, we could do this on one face, but that's going to take away some of the freedom of being able to move this point anywhere. Now, we could do this by eye, so for example I could sort of G over to there and then G to there and that's probably okay but if we've got this perfectly smooth outer edge we want to try and maintain that as best as possible. Now you might ask why we might be moving this vertex but actually it does come up a surprising amount but generally it's if you're doing something like trying to bevel some parts that are boolean together and this is just getting in the way so you just need to edge it out just a little bit. But there are lots of other reasons for this as well and we'll cover some of them and some different techniques and have a look at how versatile they are. So the first and most obvious is the typical vertex slide of GG and then we can slide it along one of these edges and whichever edge it's closest to you can see there's a white line whichever one's closest to it will go to that edge. So we can maintain our topology as we move this along relatively well there. Now what if we want to move along away from one of these angles? Well, we can solve that quite easily by selecting two of them, pressing J to join them, and now we've added an edge that we can just slide along if we want to go at sort of approximately 45 degrees from where it was. Now, I will point out this is creating some issues here. For example, we have got some non-flat faces, but importantly on these edges, if I press Ctrl and R, we are able to maintain or put in an edge loop if we wanted to, because this is still quads. Obviously, these two faces here and here are not. And we've just got to bear that in mind, but we can just GG and slide that along and Control and X to dissolve that face, and we've still got everything as quads, though slightly ugly in the quad front. Now, the other method that is also a little bit limiting, but it is quite nice, is we can go into face mode, select a face, Shift and then 7 on the number pad. And my screencast keys don't seem to pick up, that's the 7, but either way, this will put us straight onto this face, and then we can G and move this vertex freely because it will move via that view. So that works quite nicely, but you've got to remember that if you're going to do this by one of the other faces, you'll then need to select that face, shift and seven, and then do it from there. You can't move on to one of the other faces. You'll notice it starts causing a problem with that topology. So you need to be careful with where you're doing that. But this does have some benefits as a technique. So I went to face mode and then I to inset that and then E to extrude it out. This is the only one of these techniques where we could pretty much select all of the vertices and then move this object as a whole. So if I just come into face mode, shift and seven, and then go into vertex mode and then select those vertices, I can now G and move this around and it's keeping that shape without causing any problems. Now the other thing we can do, bear in mind that we're not going to be able to achieve this using any of our local axes here, is to set up a custom orientation. So if I go into, let's say, face mode for this one, come in here and click a plus, we now get this face. And if I go into vertex mode, I can now press G and then let's say X, and it will move along that face in that direction, or Y, though Z is going to come out or in, so we just need to be aware of which one we're doing. But that does work, though again we're limited to the single face that we've recently selected, so in this instance we can only move into that face before we have to change our custom orientation. Let's get rid of that and go back to global. Now the last two I'd say are probably the most powerful. One of them is a little inconvenient, which is this one, but it does work. So what I'm going to do is just Shift and D, duplicate my object so I've now got exactly the same object underneath the one that I want to do something with. And with that what I can do is come to this vertex. I normally have my snapping set to a mix but I'm going to change this to just be face. I'm not going to turn this on because I always just leave it off and hold down control but now I can press G and then if I hold down control it's going to snap to all the faces that are underneath this as long as I hold down that control which means that I can bring this anywhere to here, hide that second cube, and we've got that achieved. And again, we've kept our topology because it's been snapping it, or almost shrink wrapping it, to that face below. Let's just undo that, and we're going to delete that second cube. Now the final method is going to use an add-on, but that add-on is free. And if you know the channel, you probably know which add-on I'm going to straight away. It is Machine Tools, and it's one of the best add-ons you can get. I would say if there is one add-on you need for Blender, it is this one. If you're going to do hard surface modeling, maybe if you're going to do anything actually. And it's got so many different tools that you can use, and it is free. So what I'm going to do is scroll down here, 
and we want the surface slide function. Now, save preferences come out of this, and what this does is it adds to my tab menu. That's how in machine tools you can get very quickly to let's say face mode or vertex mode or edge mode or back to object mode. It's really, really quick and I like it because I just think it's quicker and a bit more visual than using the ones of one, two, three. It also frees up the one, two, threes for other things. But in this menu, it then gives us the surface slide option. And if I now click this vertex, anytime I press G and move it, it will stick to the surface that I'm moving onto effectively meaning I can move it onto any face. I mean, I can go off of it, but it's gonna cause problems. But you'll notice that it is sticking to the faces that I'm moving onto. And therefore, if it's on one of the ones adjacent to it, it's just gonna move really nicely to that new position. It is an absolutely amazing tool and it maintains the topology pretty much as perfectly as you can. The other thing that's great about this, if I go into face mode and then I, is you can also use this as long as you're just dealing with a single face, you can G, and again, that will stick to the surface that it's on. Though as opposed to the method where we're using Shift 7, if I come out of surface slider and then E to extrude this, this is now not gonna work. If I, let's say, select all of these faces, tab, and then surface slide, and then G, it's going to, well, have issues. So it does have its limitations, but again, as something that is part of a free add-on, I think this is absolutely amazing. And it just makes moving topology around really quick and easy and you know that you're safe because you're maintaining the shape of your object as best as you realistically can. So that's all the methods that I know about. I'd love to hear if you know any others that I've missed in this quick run through. So if you do, feel free to add something to the comment section. I and the rest of the community obviously would really appreciate it and I'm always impressed with how much people are willing to share from the Blender community. As always, if you found this useful, please do give this video a like, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and if you want to support the channel further, it does have a Patreon page where for a few dollars a month you get these videos ad-free, a week early, and other great perks as well. Have a great day, guys.